Um, greetings and welcome. Today we're going to begin our discussion of the Greek play Antigone. And uh, as we, you, you guys already know, we already discussed the play Oedipus. <clears throat> At the end of the play Oedipus, we will see that the only, out of the four, um, the, the, the two sons and the two daughters that Oedipus um, had, we have Eteocles and Polynices are the two boys, and the two girls are Antigone and Ismene. Out of those four, only Antigone will go with Oedipus to Colonus. Remember that Oedipus, at the end of Oedipus Rex, will be put in exile by the newly king, King Creon. Now, when we open the play Antigone, the, the play will open as Creon being the king. However, this is the second term of Creon as king. It, it's not the continuation from the, his kingdom in, uh, in Thebes when Oedipus um, was put in exile. No, this is going to be the second term for um, King Creon. Very important, the Argive army has just attacked the city of Thebes. And uh, very important when, uh, when Eteocles and Polynices are old enough to assume the throne, they're gonna, apparently they're gonna take some turns. The play will not specify uh, what actually happened. So apparently in those shifting of, of turns, we're gonna have uh, an Eteocles that didn't wanna concede the, th the, the throne. And then Polynices is gonna be uh, full of rage. He's gonna get the Argive army and he will enter Thebes and he will attack Thebes. Uh, as a result of that attack, both Eteocles and Polynices are gonna end up dead. Um, they, they will kill each other in battle. And uh, according to Creon, remember he's in, in the bloodline, he has the next, uh, he's the heir to the throne. Well, he's not the heir to the throne. Is that obviously if we're in the monarchy, in the bloodline, the one who will go automatically um, is Creon. Now, Creon is... I don't know if I, I could put Creon in the same category as Oedipus. Um, this is something that you, you guys have to um, find out for yourselves as long as, as you go reading along. But um, according to Creon, Eteocles died honorably. And Polynices did not die honorably because you know that he um, invaded um, the city of Thebes. So now... We're gonna we're gonna shift to Antigone and Ismene, and they're gonna they're gonna have a conversation, and um, and Ismene is gonna ask Antigone if she has heard anything from Polynices, and Antigone is gonna say no, and uh, Ismene will reveal to Antigone that they they don't want to give a proper burial to to Polynices, and they're gonna give leave his corpse right there in the battlefield to rot. That was the order of King Creon. Uh, Antigone is irate with this decision. Um, Antigone doesn't want this to happen. She believes that if Eteocles had a proper burial, um, Polynices should, should have a proper burial also. So she's gonna decide to go and, um, and provide that, that burial to her brother. Very important, if you go against uh, a decree from, from the king, uh, there, there, there are gonna be some consequences, and in this case, the consequence uh, will be death. So, um, Antigone and Ismene will have a, a kind of an exchange, and they will argue because you're gonna see uh, a submissive Ismene and a uh, strong upright woman in Antigone. Antigone is the the perfect role model for for females. It, it's this role model 
um, that that stands up not only for what is right, but she's not gonna have any fear uh, of saying what she needs to say in whatever whatever is the form. She doesn't care. She will say it. Um, Crayon will will go on stage later on after Antigone and Ismini depart and, and Creon will deliver his inaugural speech. Very important, stay tuned because um, as we go along, I'm gonna assign um, the inaugural speech of, of Creon. I'm gonna assign the inaugural, another inaugural speech that I believe it, it was very important in our history, and that's the inaugural speech of John F. Kennedy. We're gonna make the connections between um, those two inaugural speeches, and we're gonna come to um, our own conclusions on how effective both of them were. Um, Crayon will speak after that inaugural speech. He's gonna speak with uh, Caragas, very important the Caragas is the leader of the chorus and and, and Oedipus is like um, do not reward whoever goes against the rules of the king or of the, of the city of Thebes and the Caragas will say only a crazy man is in love with death so the Caragas acknowledges that if you're willing to go against the the ruling or the laws of a king or the decrees of a king, uh, you know that the ultimate price will be execution, your your death. All of a sudden, a sentry, a sentry is a watchman, and uh, this sentry will enter the stage with very important news. Um, about the orders, precise orders that Crayon gave. Crayon will ask the sentry um, to speak, and uh, the sentry is saying to Crayon, I'm not going to be punished for something that someone else um, did. And um, so, so Crayon in this case. Um, it's like then if you don't want to be punished I need you to tell me what actually happens so I could take matters in the situation so nothing I'm gonna leave you right there with with the first part I'm gonna do a, a set of five parts of this play Antigone and uh, so I'm gonna divide it in, in like small videos of less than 10 minutes so nothing stay tuned for video number two in which we're gonna get engaged on what happened between the century and Kriya. Thank you.